to go to a clinic, um, a Rohingya woman or man or a child will have to go through four checkpoints on average to, to see. And then also like in the Rohingya area, the ratio of doctor to patients is one doctor is to 186,000 Rohingya. National average is 1,000 or 2,000 patients will have access to one doctor. For the Rohingya, there will be one doctor for 180,000 Rohingya. Yeah? And, 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 and so, so, so I think that this is a situation that's even worse than Gaza or West Bank. West Bank and Gaza, if you don't go to Israel to work, you don't you have israeli spies but you don't have to go through checkpoints you can your community can still organize resistance in the rohingya area the villages are not villages villages are cons uh, security grids yeah so so they the the military will look at the map and draw the the grids and then post uh, armed guards in you know it's like a a massive prison with a higher concentration of guards. Gaza is also like a, an open prison, but less presence of uh, security. Palestinians in West Bank and Gaza have more freedom than Rohingya. Think about it. You cannot go to the next village four miles away without going through four checkpoints to see a midwife. Because for Rohingyas, yeah, for repatriation to work, they need to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Get assurances. Yeah. I mean, not just assurances. Like, you know, the, the, the mantra from the UN is like, the repatriation has to be sa uh, voluntary, mm -hmm. safe, dignified, and sustainable. Yeah? And then, so these are four conditions that every diplomat, say, like, uh, uh, has to be met, you know, uh, uh, before repatriation can begin. So it's so, possible? Not possible. No, because like, you know why it's not possible? It is like a 1945 scenario. 1945, you know, the concentration camps were captured yeah, uh, by the Red Armies and also Allied forces. Like Auschwitz was shut in the spring of 1945. And a lot of, uh, the, you know, one million people died there. They were killed or they perished. And um, I mean, if, it is like asking the Holocaust survivors, go back into these camps. We're going to give you better toilets and amenities. There will be electricity. There will be better food. But SS is going to be there. German SS, Nazi SS. SS is going to be there. Eichmann is, was going to stay in, in command. Yeah, You go back. It's okay. It's okay. But, you know, if you ask the Holocaust survivor to go back to the, any of the camp while SS continue to run, and if they refuse, whose fault is it? Yeah? So the question isn't that Rohingyas are, you know, not wanting to go back. They want to go back. They don't want to live in Bangladesh. Bangladesh is not their country. They openly say Myanmar is our country. We, don't, we are not Bengali. Yeah, we share some cultural and, um, you know, cultural traits. Uh, we share some language, yeah? but, but we are different people. We are not Chittagonia. We are from Myanmar. That's our homeland. We want to go back. They burned 400 villages. They've been killing us since 1978. And we go back, we run, and then like uh, Myanmar said, it's okay to come back. UNHCR said, it's okay to come back. We go back, and then they kill us again, and we run again. Yeah? <laughs> and so this time, no, we are not going back. Yeah? And so the question is like, is repatriation a solution? Yes, it is a solution. But can this solution be pursued or implemented? No, not under the circumstances. Primarily because they need to feel that um, the military and the police and the Rakhine militia will not come and kill them again. Because they just saw what happened to their mothers and fathers and children, and yeah, and a lot of them survived the rape, yeah, and then they saw their own children killed while they're being raped. <laughs> so like, you cannot tell these people to go back, yeah. And so if if they don't want to go back, 
And if Bangladesh forces them to go back, then Bangladesh will become a bad guy because that is against international humanitarian law. Yeah? And, uh, and so I think that like Bangladesh is aware of it. Yeah? But at the same time, I think like two things need to happen. One is um, um, Bangladesh is carrying a huge burden, yeah, to be fair to Bangladesh, yeah, and then it's all, um, I mean, like Bangladesh is becoming, uh, you know, a, 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 a better economy, more prosperous place compared to, say, 1970s, yeah, um, but, but still, it cannot be asked to feed one million people alone, yeah, so for, for Bangladesh, to be able to keep Rohingya, one million Rohingya, on its soil, where they are, international community has to meet the obligations, humanitarian obligations, which is like, you know, providing uh, 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 Bangladesh with 100% money yeah, to feed them, the med medical supply like technology, education. advice, edu you know, all kinds of things, yeah? So now Bangladesh feels that it is under pressure from international community not to send the Rohingyas back when the situation is not safe for them, yeah? But at the same time, that very same international community is not helping the Bangladesh to the extent it, it, is, it should be helping them, yeah? So the, the humanitarian aid is uh, only... 40%, the need is met only 40%, 60% is missing. Uh, no, nothing new. I mean, I would just repeat the same thing. I mean, the most important thing is like, you know, there has to be some form of intervention. You know, intervention, I don't mean like, you know, Turkey sends like, you know, a squadron of F-16 and bomb the country. Or like a United States, like, you know, uh, uh, you know, fire missiles, you know. I don't mean, there are different types of intervention, yeah? Intervention can be something like this, yeah? Bangladesh hosts an international conference, yeah? Bang I know Bangladesh has been going to different meetings and meeting with OIC and others, yeah? Bangladesh mobilized, you know... International community. Yeah, say like, uh, we want to host an international conference to determine the future of Rohingya people because under the current situation the perpetrators are still in power Aung San Suu Kyi is either unwilling or siding with the military or not accepting even the UN's verdict that this is a crime that her army is committing yeah so Aung San Suu Kyi is not the solution talking to her is utterly useless yeah like you know Relaxing a few rules is not going to solve in a place where Rohingyas are no longer accepted as part of Burma. So, but, but they have nowhere else to go. Resettlement is not the, the pro solution. No one's going to take one million people, particularly not one million Muslims. Yeah? No country in the world will take one million Muslims into the, not Canada, not USA. You know what I mean? And no rich. Even 10. <laughs> yeah, not even like, you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah? Like, look at, like, Angel Angela Merkel. She, she's been, like, you know, like pushed out of power now because she, she opened the borders to, like, uh, you know, like 200,000 refugees. German society is up in arm against the Merkel, and then it gave rise to, um, you know, like a German nationalist, you know, the new fascism. That's why Hillary Clinton said, you know, stop the immigration if you, if you want to stop fascism, yeah? And, and that's not something I agree, but, 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 but I think... There has to be an intervention. That intervention needs to be thought out strategically and creatively. Yeah? And, 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 and I think the, uh, the of course, I, the, 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 you know, like no genocide is ever committed by a single nation state alone. Whenever genocide is committed, there is always a coalition of friends that either support the, the, the criminal regime or that protect the regime. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, Hitler did not commit genocide alone. Yeah. yeah, it was supported by the Swiss and, you know, the, uh, the British in the early period, you know, uh, the Sweden, yeah, and the Finland, Norway, yeah. So, so I think to, to focus on 
Nema alone is not enough. To recognize that genocide is a crime that is committed by a single state with the collaboration, complicity, and support of other states. Bangladesh cannot just simply say, you know, like put more pressure on the Burmese regime. Tell them to take back the Rohingyas. No. Bangladesh will have to come up with a strategy that needs to be developed in alliance with other states that agree that Burma is committing a genocide. Yeah? And, 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 you know, the U.S. may not say a genocide, yeah? but that doesn't mean that the <clears throat> U.S. does not quietly agree this is a genocide. So therefore, I think what, what, what needs to be done is Bangladesh, you know, <clears throat> call for an international conference with the, you know, pointed and specific objective to determine the future of Rohingya people. It's, it must not be about repatriation because repatriation is no longer the solution. It's not a solution because it cannot be implemented. It, can, it, is, it will be a solution if only repatriation can be pursued and implemented. That's not possible. Like in this scenario, like, you know, repatriation is like, you know, sending the Holocaust survivors back to Auschwitz. Yeah, suicide. It is a suicide.